Hello everyone and welcome to the Pondering Couch. Um, I thought just before we go any further, just to explain why I'm in a suit and Trevor's in his shorts. I'm doing a wedding today. Wonderful. It should be, it should be exciting. Um, it's a beautiful day for a wedding. It's before. a glorious day. So yeah, it's, it's terrific. So yeah, you're yeah. overdressed and, yeah. I'm, and I'm underdressed, but um, yeah, no one's smart. No yeah. one's service on the Zoom. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us on the Pondering Couch and we're going to ponder some more on mm. um, Acts uh, chapter 2. So 40, 42, 42 to 47, was it? Yes. The closing verses. Yeah. Short kind of verses, but there's so much kind of packed yeah. in there. And I'm, I really enjoyed what you were talking about and highlighting the kind of four marks of, of what possibly a healthy church yeah, uh, looks like. But what are some of the other things that you're kind of pondering on um, looking at this passage? Yeah, it's it was a fascinating passage, wasn't it? Mm. So we, we looked at the four marks, but yeah. then we had that conversation, didn't we? That it's not so much what they were doing but mm. how they were doing Absolutely. it so yeah. yes you have the uh the sort of the list of actual activities what was it again it was the apostles teaching fellowship yeah. breaking of bread yeah. and prayer but then there were these themes of devotion yeah. of awe and wonder mm. and glad and sincere hearts wasn't yeah. it that's that's how they, they were doing it mm. so i guess really one of the questions which has been on my mind is you know to what extent is acts a book that we are call to recreate yeah and to what extent is it uh, a, a sort of an early vision of, of a very young um movement making it up as we go along yeah. you know can a church like sbc which is established which is uh set in its ways we could say but necessarily set in its ways because a community of 200 people yeah. needs to have structure and Absolutely. needs to have plans and rotors and arrangements to order its life to what extent can we sort of be a, a church like acts it's interesting isn't it so often when you see new movements of church uh, appear or, or renewal come to the church yeah. it often seems to be in an offshoot or yeah. some new emerging branch of the church yeah. the more established branches seem to find it harder to be renewed so I guess that's just been on my mind yeah. uh, a little bit as I've been thinking what do we do uh, with these Acts passages to what extent is it a call uh, to us to change in, in a way that we fully can mm -hmm. so the thing that we were talking about just before we recorded and we talked about on sunday yeah uh, was this idea of rewilding yes and uh, i found this fascinating so um we were talking about this in the foyer that rewilding is this uh idea that comes from agriculture mm -hmm. where uh, there are some farmers and environmentalists and other people saying well why not let nature lead so in the way that farms of probably become kind of a factory approach to raising animals yeah. uh, and even to growing crops there will be pesticides and other yeah. chemicals that um, crops are sprayed with there will be fertilizers yeah. that go on to grind yeah. and so forth what about leaving bits of land just to be wild uh, and just to let nature lead and you see this going on in other ways where environmentalists will be trying to reintroduce uh, species into uh, sort of uh, habitats where they haven't dwelled uh, yeah. for a long time and so i've just been wondering is there a picture there for us that it, it, we may well be a more established church mm. uh, a church 90 to 100 years can't quite remember how old we are yeah. and we will always have to have some degree of organization uh, in terms of how we live and how we get on but particularly now coming back after covid there is a bit of a blank page not entirely blank but there, there are bits of space mm. we don't have to fill them in mm. immediately do we have to rush back to doing everything the way we did or can we just leave some spaces uh, free in our schedules mm. and in our program of activity and uh, let those spaces be rewilded by God, yeah. as it were. So in the yeah. same way they say, let nature lead. Yeah. We just say, we're not going to rush and step in and do lots of stuff. God, why don't, why don't we just leave some space mm -hmm. for you to guide us? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's quite 
it's quite deep. And I think it's the picture we see in the early church. It seems to be it's the Holy Spirit working and the apostles are kind of tagging along to what the Holy Spirit is doing. And I think what you were talking about, just the goosebumps. Mm. Must have, cause it, and again, that sense of awe, because things were amazing. Things were happening, were mind-blowing. And as you said, people were being struck there. The, people were yeah. being healed. And the church was growing at such a rapid rate. Clearly, this is the Holy Spirit working and the disciples are working alongside the Holy Spirit and, and working in many different ways. But I think, yeah, of course, organization is, is good in a sense. Um, gives us structure. And I think there was times where Paul had to call churches to, to be organized and patterned yeah, and so yeah. on. But there's still an element of let the Spirit lead this and we are tagging along to what the Spirit is doing. And it's, yeah, it's powerful. Yeah. yeah. You've reminded me, I mean, I remember, and we talked about this in the foyer as well on Sunday. I remember a year or two ago reading a really helpful little book on leadership by a guy called Viv Thomas. And uh, we looked at some of his material in the diaconate yes. when we were thinking about yeah. leadership. Viv's worked for OM for years, and I know that he's on uh, the leadership uh, of his own church in London. One of the things he talks about is the need for, for godly leaders to be willing to live out of control. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's an interesting idea. And uh, like you're saying, you have that picture don't you in acts it was not entirely under their control no. i mean it was that we wake up and we wonder what is god going to do next <laughs> and who's going to appear next because yeah. who's he going to call next or where is he going to send us to next and you know it must have been exhausting mm. as well as it was yeah. exciting and i wonder if all of us find it hard to live completely out of control we, we want to impose some order exactly. and we want yeah. to yeah. Uh, have a sense of maybe being masters of our destiny yeah. and, and we like things to be ordered and predictable but if we're going to follow god mm. there is something about a constant willingness to be interrupted isn't there mm. for him to interrupt our plans yeah. or the people he sends our way to interrupt our plans yeah, and absolutely. interrupt our ways of doing things absolutely. and and acts just feels doesn't it like one giant mm. interruption or, or disturbance after yeah, another by yeah, god absolutely absolutely yeah yeah, it's, yeah. so things a lot to think about it's for sure about. Is. yeah and i think especially as we ease into some sort of normality um because there is a danger to just go back and do things the way it was yeah uh, but maybe this is a time for the holy spirit just to, to breathe on on new things and and breathe in ways that we're maybe not expecting. So, Amen. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for, for joining us on the Pondering Couch. Um, that hopefully should be, um, I'm sure who's preaching next week. Catherine. Catherine Kane. That should be, yeah, that should be That'd really be fantastic. Uh, we get to have her on the Pondering Couch to, to ponder some more. So God willing, uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye. Amen. Bye.